at this point, I would like to talk about color swatches and gradients just a little bit here in InDesign. And we'll just be covering the basics of, of how these work. So to do that, right now I have a blank document. I'm just going to create a simple shape. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool over from my toolbox and then just make a big rectangle. Okay, so right now it's really nothing, you know, nothing special. We have nothing inside uh, or white and just this black border going around it. Well, if we want to change that, we know by now that we can go up to the top of the screen here and change our fill and our border colors. And we can also get to that information over here on the right under swatches, for example. So it's the same information in both places. So briefly, InDesign comes with a few different swatches that you can use right away, and these are important. So we, we essentially here have two different sets of primaries, one for the subtractive color system and one for the additive color system. So this upper portion, we have black, then we have cyan, magenta, and yellow. So that's the CMYK. That's the subtractive color system uh, used in commercial printing. That's what your home printer would work with and so on. So these are the subtractive primaries right here. Then below that we have red, green, and blue, RGB. So these are the additive primaries and these primary colors are what your computer monitor, for example, uses to produce all the colors on your screen. So you have all of these available to you right away. So if you're doing some type of commercial printing process or something like that, these are going to be very important to you. Um, for the rest of us, you know, just keep that in mind, but you know, you're not stuck with those colors. You have, you know, the whole, the whole rainbow at your disposal. But these swatches are really handy while you're working, and I highly encourage you to use the swatches palette while you're working. It'll make your, make your portfolio or whatever you're doing here um, go a lot faster. So to actually access the color picker, what I'm going to do is come over to my toolbox down towards the bottom where we have the fill and the outline color, the fill and the stroke. If I just click on that fill or stroke, either way, I'm going to get to the color picker. So right now, if you use uh, Photoshop, for example, you're going to notice that this looks different than the Photoshop color picker. This is actually an option in Photoshop. You can look at it this way, but traditionally most people tend to look at the color picker in Photoshop um, a little bit differently. So this can be kind of, um, kind of throw you off a little bit when you first start. So the color picker in InDesign gives you options to look at it either in RGB or lab color. So I'm going to stick with the RGB and just notice here that we can toggle from red to green to blue and that's changing how we're experiencing this color picker here. So notice if I have red selected and then this slider right here is all the way up at the top that's making this you know the lightest and most brilliant I can see it. We have red down in the lower left hand corner with a red violet going to magenta then a red, orange, and yellow, and finally white in the corner. And then we're seeing blue out here. If I change this to the green view, this will be green in the corner, to cyan, and yellow, and then white, with magenta on the outside. And then if I change it to blue, it's blue down in the corner, with the violets and cyan, and yellow on the outside. So it just takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you, you know, play around and get comfortable with it, Notice that you can click within here to change the color and then what you're seeing is the original color down below in this box and your current color and I can pick it within here and also use my slider within each color space so I can start picking some colors. When I find a color that I like, I can add a CMYK swatch. If I click that, you'll see that it added the swatch right here and it actually changed the object that I have currently selected. So I can go through and pick a series of colors and add those swatches to my swatch palette so that they're available for me later when I want to use them. Also take note that these numbers are changing. So as I move around and pick different colors, these values change. 
and we could write down the numbers for the RGB or lab or the CMYK percentages, whatever you're more comfortable with, just take note of which one it is, and you can always write those down and type them in and get the exact same color. If you're more comfortable with the Photoshop color picker, you would have the option of selecting colors in there, then opening them up in here, and I can show you that at another time. So once you, you know, get a bunch of colors you like, we can just say OK. And notice that because I had this selected, it did change it to that purple. To select it, I just use my black arrow and click on it. I could then click on any color in my swatches, and it will change to that color. Likewise, if I come over here to my fill and stroke color, if I bring that fill, or, or put the fill in the back rather, and bring that stroke to the foreground, then I would be changing the color of the stroke. That's going to be hard to see on the screen, so I'll just make that stroke oops, a lot thicker. So now that's red, now it's pink, now it's purple, and so on. So it's really just that easy. And if you, you know, decide that maybe you have too many swatches in here or you have duplicates or something, just know that you can click on any one of them and throw it out. I'm just going to hit cancel here, but you can go in and throw any of them away. Okay? That's really the basics of using the swatches palette. Up above that, we also have the color palette as well. So that within each color, you can come in and play with the tint and so on, uh, which is a very handy way of working with it. So once you get maybe this purple that you like, you could actually go in and play with the tint and lighten it up or make it darker and so on. So here we have just a solid color fill, and we did that with these swatches. What we can also do is put in a gradient. So a gradient will be found over in your toolbox way on the left, and it's this button right here. So there's a gradient and a gradient feather tool. We just want the gradient at this point. If I double click on that button, it will actually open up my gradient palette. Okay, and that might be, you know, what I want active right away. All right, so then within my shape, with it selected, I can click and drag, and that will make a gradient. So I had my uh, stroke active, so it actually put that gradient within the line of my shape. If I come down here and flip-flop that, you'll see that I can actually reverse it, or I can put my um, fill color on top. Okay, So right now I am making a gradient with these active colors here in my gradient palette. Mine happens to be on radial, but I could be changing that to linear. So it will either be coming from a center point out, kind of like the sun or, you know, a wheel on a bike or something like that, or linear will be in a straight line. Now, my past gradient uh, was this blue to yellow, so that's why I'm seeing that. But yours likely came in black and white, so I'm just going to show that real quick. So yours probably came in looking something like this. Okay. If you want to change the colors, which I just illustrated there, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is come down to your swatches, click on a color you want, and then just plop it right up there. So you click on it and drag it up there. So you can, you know, make any kind of gradient that you want and it will just add these colors. If you want to get rid of a color, you simply click on it up in this gradient menu, pull straight down, and that gets rid of it. Then within your gradient menu here, you can actually slide the colors around and change the order. Something like that. And then those triangles, or diamonds rather, up above, determine how the colors are blending with each other. Okay, so you can play around with that quite a bit. I could change this to radial if I wanted to, and I could even reverse the colors. So you have a lot of options here. If you decide that this is something you might like, something you might like to keep, you can add this to your swatches as well. If I simply right click on the thumbnail, I can say add to swatches, or I can click and drag and bring it in. 
But notice that on mine, I did it, but I didn't see anything happen. That's because I'm viewing the swatches in terms of solid colors only. Down here at the bottom of that menu, that's what this little button means. I could click the next one over and only be looking at my gradients. And since I put it down here twice, there's actually two of them. So I could throw one of those away. And then I could be coming back in. You know, maybe I want to change this a little bit just so we can see what that looks like. I'll say add to swatches and we'll see that they're right here. I can also view the swatches with both solid colors and gradients in the same list. So you're gonna have a lot of options here in terms of selecting colors from the color picker, adding them to the swatches, creating gradients and adding them to the swatches as well, and then you can use them throughout your project.